Let's just give her a minute. Thank you so much for your patience. We are coming live to you. Hi, there you go. Hi, Daro. How are you? Very good, very good. That is a really cool glasses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now, Daro, um, before we dive into uh, the conversation today, uh, perhaps just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are right now. Uh, I suppose it's you're in Georgia. Which part of Georgia and uh, what are you up to? Um, first of all, I want to know, how do you pronounce your name? Because My I name is Declan Pung. Okay, because I thought you were saying it differently, but okay, I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So yeah, tell us uh, what you're up to and, and um, something about yourself. Well, I can start out with how I started photography. Um, I was uh, very young. I was 14 years old. Um, and it was a very interesting journey for me because um, becoming a photographer for me was definitely not like a conscious decision, but rather spontaneous because I didn't really understand uh, the meaning of photography. Um, I never questioned myself until many years later uh, what photography stood and well, it took many stages and um, before like I came to realize what photography meant to me and what I was actually doing. So yeah, um, I'm the 90s uh, generation. Uh, I grew up after the Soviet, uh, after the mm -hmm. collapse Union, uh, where Georgia was struggling heavily. So um, we had pretty much no electricity, no heat and water like many other post-Soviet countries and um, so my, my family decided to move to migrate to America because um, America was something that was like the land of the dreams and it was really mm. a country where, where when you went there, everything would be okay, so. It's the promised land. Yeah, the promised land. Uh, so like many other families, we, we moved uh, to America for a very long time and that was the plan, but after a couple of years, um, me and my sister were forgetting our language and kind of our, our culture. So my dad decided to um, bring us back to Georgia, uh, despite the really terrible, unpredicted future that lay ahead of us because it was still the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was very tough coming back uh, to Georgia during that time. Uh, I had completely forgotten my language. I knew very little. Um, so I was thinking uh, in English, trying to speak in um, Georgian, and Russian was something I was seeing from a television, and I, I learned from cartoons when I was a kid. And mm. Especially my generation did not have a good knowledge back then of English because uh, Russian was still like a dominant. Um, right. So. Uh, as a teenager, I pretty much had this uh, complex of uh, expressing myself with words, and it was, um, yeah, it was really, really tough, and that was like this great time when I discovered uh, a camera, and it became like an into my diary of uh, expressing my emotions and my feelings, and uh, I was taking pictures of almost uh, anything, like I started out with photographing my family, of course, because... Mm -hmm. Who gave you the first camera? Um, well, it wasn't in the family because uh, my family are all, almost everyone from my dad's side are artists. So my grandfather was a, a photographer as well. Well, he was a, uh, not a photographer, but a filmmaker. But um, yeah, so the camera we had uh, in the family, which I used uh, for the first time, but it was my mm -hmm. sister who about photography first. And when I looked at her and saw how it was very magical for me when she was bringing back like the contact sheets. Um, and so that's so uh, when I got hold of the camera myself. Mm. It was really interesting um, time for me because I had this um, tool where I could definitely speak. Um, and I was skipping school uh, almost uh, every day. And I was going out with my friends and sometimes in like outer neighborhoods or um, somewhere in urban um, neighborhoods where it was really interesting and I, I couldn't wait just to go out and, and photograph and you know it I was see. how I was speaking to the world like when you go out and um, 
it, it's a must to put your shoes on to walk outside. And uh, it was something that I had the camera, I had to have it with me. So yeah, it, it kind of became part of me. So it was, it was really um, interesting because um, I did not really acknowledge that it could have been a profession in the future. So I was, see. So uh, you, I think, so tr remind me again, like you started taking pictures at 14, but you moved back to Georgia at what age? I moved back to Georgia when I was 12. Oh, okay. So that's why you didn't have that language foundation and you saw photography. Your camera was your voice of expressing yourself. Now, I, I also realized that your work, most of your project is very, uh, very focused in Georgia itself. It, it is, it's like you trying to get to know your culture and your, your heritage through the, these uh, personal projects. So I think, talk to me a little bit about um, how that, that connection of, you know, exploring Georgia, your heritage, your culture through uh, uh, photography came to be. Was it a very natural process or kind of just like, ah, oh, I, can, I, can I can do photography for this purpose? Well, it was um, my first, very first photo project uh, was pretty much how uh, ch I ch it changed the way I looked at photography. Um, mm -hmm. and it was uh, definitely something that kind of uh, in the future shaped uh, how I saw photography because um, I had not really had this um, uh, plan that, okay, I will go and uh, document this and I'll have a photo story and so on. Um, it, it was uh, a story that I got interested in because um, my, uh, my gra it was about Chechen refugees living in Bankesi Gorik. It's, a, uh, it's in, located in Georgia where 5,000 Chechens had to escape the deadly war in Chechnya and they settled in mm. Gorik. Um, so my great grandfather, great great grandmother, I'm sorry, um, was uh, a Chechen, and uh, I was always hearing the stories from childhood about her and about her culture and about how she was very respected in her tribe and so mm -hmm. on. Yeah, it's um, I uh, during that time in 2007, 2008, uh, Chechens had this reputation of. Um, you know, it was very stereotyped as um, Chechens being terrorists, and uh, I really wanted to sh destroy the stereotype and show them in a different light, uh, showing everyday um, life of, uh, uh, of the people there and how um, they were struggling like us, trying to survive in this really uh, situation that we're in because at that time they didn't really have a proper document so it was there were, it was really hard for them to find jobs and so on and so on every day mm -hmm. and issues and so that's why I went there at first uh, to Pankisi Gorg and it was a place where it was considered to be a dangerous place and um, I, I spent some time there to just uh, get to mm -hmm. know them and, you know, photograph their everyday life and at the end, I, I kind of put the photos together and decided that I, I have the story in a way. And I sent it out. To, well, the, the reason I did the story is to um, show people that um, they were just this ordinary people and <laughs> everyday life, just like us. And I, the, uh, how I could have um, spread the word was uh, just to send out in many competitions and many grants and uh, it got published uh, actually in, in a lot of places and uh, it won a couple of awards and that's how mm. people saw the, the story and it definitely spread in a wider audience not only in Georgia and I had people emailing me because so I didn't, there was no Instagram back then or uh, other mm. that I was like, using Right, right. So it's you are using photography to shed light into into uh, the stereotype, the breaking stereotypes that people how people look at Chechnya. Yeah, and uh, one, you know, it started with one person and then two, and people were writing to me and saying that, oh, thank you so much for showing me in this different um, uh, perspective. And you know, this uh, this was the moment where uh, things kind of changed for me because I realized that yes, you can. Um, uh, change the way people think about certain topics and certain issues and then you can 
um, you know, I started dialogue and maybe from there uh, things will change. Um, so I, it's, it's, um, it's, it was very interesting for me and that's how I pretty much started out to do the stories of, um, Right, right. Okay. I guess that's the, that's the point where you realize that, oh, the images has such a power to, to shift people's perspective in, in, uh, on, on the same issue. They see a different, uh, from the different angle, but this, Tell us how did that kind of propel your career forward from that initial realization that, wow, I, I can use my photography uh, skills to, to pursue certain, certain uh, social cause, right? Was there something, uh, a particular cause that you were passionate about? Like, for example, so the question is, is there a particular social cause that you are passionate about um, throughout, um, you know, using your, your photography skills, shooting so many different topics? Is there something that stood out to you that you feel um, that is your calling to, to, to pursue it uh, further? So some people, some people talk about LGBT, some people like to uh, shed light into uh, poverty or, um, you know, indigenous groups. So what is, is the cause that, that makes you, um, that drives you forward every day to 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 stay in in the photography industry. Well, um, there, like in, in my country, there are, there are these issues that um, when I started out uh, doing stories, um, uh, a lot of um, things were not talked about. So I ha kind of had this urge to um, be the one talking about it, and. Um, it, it was something that every story had a very personal meaning to me and mm -hmm. um, kind of what um, uh, made the stories possible because um, it, it, it was really close uh, personally and emotionally. And uh, because I was going um, from childhood, my mother was uh, taking me, um, she's an artist, so she traveled a lot in the regions of Georgia. So she took me everywhere uh, she went pretty much. And I, mm -hmm. I, I just photographed them uh, when I was, you know, when I was very young. And I, I saw all this kind of, um, met all these people um, who lived in these isolated regions and in, in these villages who had all, like, str they were all struggling and they were all showing this, uh, still this so, so much um, passion for life. And I, I kind of grew up with, um, I kind of grew up with them, photographing them, these people, and um, they, they taught me so many unimaginable things that was, um, they gave me so much in life, and so that's why I, later, I think that was kind of very unconscious, but that's why I wanted to kind of go back and tell the stories. Um, I, I'm still thinking about it, and you know, because everything um, comes as, um, uh, right. Later you're trying to question yourself as a photographer why you're doing the things that you're doing why you're photographing why did you do the story because mm, a lot of things that i did in the in the first place were very unconscious i just did it because it felt very strong to for me emotionally and personally so yeah it, it, it's um it's something i still question myself why i'm doing this and it's very interesting um process but actually um what's um that whatever you asked like the question that you asked was that um like every story has a very uh, personal um story. right i understand true um you know, speaking about about looking for one's passion um may i ask like how old are you right now i'm 30 i'm 35 I 35 so you've been I'm 35. <laughs> 35, and you've been photographing since 14. That makes uh, how many years? How many years have you been photographing? 11. So, um, Pardon? Since I was 14, I was, I'm photographing, so. 14. Oh, that's, that's more than 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's more than 20 years. Now, this is, this is something, um, so the world these days is very busy. People pursue a hobby and then they give up and then they move to a next thing and then they try and then they move on to the next thing. It's very hard to keep up um, and to stay passionate about one thing. 
So yeah. maybe for a lot of photographers, maybe they're just starting out. I think the question for them, uh, from them is that how do you keep yourself passionate? What is it that you do that keeps that, that, that fire burning um, every day that you're excited about photographing, excited about, you know, seeing your pictures, getting it published? So, so what is it that you do to help keep your passion alive? Um, the thing is that it's not always like that. Uh, it's, uh, there are days that it's very hard. And uh, mm. for, especially during this time, during the pandemic, it's, it's been really tough. Uh, for me, it's been really tough, uh, like many other photographers, to keep your, like, this passion alive and, you know, to do the things that you do. Um, but there are things that I cannot do now because of, uh, you know, the issues we're having due to the pandemic. So it's, uh, it's really hard. Um, to keep your passion alive all the time. Um, and I think you just have to keep yourself inspired and do the things that inspire you. So you always have this urge of, um, of making something new. Uh, so it's, um, it's definitely a really tough journey because there's up and downs always. And uh, it's sometimes you're very you know, energetic and want to do this and that, but then there are times that we just don't want to do anything and you're just mm -hmm. out, you're not getting published, you're not, you know, there are a lot of up and downs um, for me. So how do you overcome the downs? Is there anything you do or you kind of just let it pass? What is your therapy? <laughs> My therapy. Um, the thing is that um, right now I have a two-year-old son so I'm, uh, yeah, life is e extremely um, beautiful with him. So um, my, I'm definitely uh, more passionate about things and I want to do more than I ever did before. Um, so that kind of keeps me going a lot. And I think sometimes you have to kind of push yourself because um, you just have to push yourself um, in things that, you, you're so down that you don't want to do anything, but uh, just keep yourself inspired and um, read like interesting things or uh, books or see um, how these films that inspire you. And you know, there, there's so many things that you can do, just stay around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what about, uh, like you mentioned, you mentioned your, your family um, are, most of them are artists as well um, and not necessarily photographers. Do you venture into other art forms? Um, yeah, well, my dad um, uh, was teaching me how to draw when I was uh, very young. So I definitely did a lot of drawing, painting. Um, mm -hmm. So did, did that kind of influence or at least improve or kind of enrich your photography as well? As in, uh, we just want to see whether, whether it helps to, to dabble into different type of art form. And that sort of um, helps you get, uh, uh, you know, more skillful at your photography or more um, more rich when you when you produce something, having dabbled into other types. Well, the thing is that I think my parents uh, made a, a great uh, influence on um, my photography growing up. Um, with, because my both parents, and my my mom does. Uh, uh, textile work and my dad is a painter so it, it really um, made a huge influence definitely well, growing up when I was uh, looking at them you know paint and make this uh, beautiful artwork uh, and I think um, uh, yeah it, it uh, my mom always tried to um, educate us and my dad as well um, in art and that also and then my my grandfather was um, a filmmaker, um, he did one of the first cartoons in, in, in Georgia. So, like everything there um, that I did uh, regarding this uh, was very, um, yeah, was very, very um, strong uh, emotionally, I think, and that's why it made a huge influence on me. So, I see, that's, that's great. You have a lot of inspiration within the family. Definitely. Yeah, That's very, very lucky of you. Um, it sounds like your creative process um, is very intuitive. When you feel like it, you see something. 
Um, but is there is there a structured way when you are approaching your projects? So I'm asking this because um, a lot of photographers who are starting out, they only see Instagram, all the beautiful pictures, but when they want to approach a project, they have no idea where to start. So I think from, from, uh, from these interviews I do with the top 100 is to really understand the creative process that, that everyone uh, goes through and everyone has a different style. So what is your style? Um, I actually really don't like the word style in photography. I think mm. it doesn't go with the uh, I don't know, because you, when you, um, for me personally, I always uh, want to try out new things. Uh, so I don't want to um, name it as a style. I don't know. Um, it's like a word that I'm not really have a good relationship with. <laughs> but um, uh, I think uh, with my approach, I always... Um, uh, think of the stories that have very uh, personal meaning to me and that's how I, I, I kind of go and research the, 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 the topic I want to do a story on and sometimes when I research uh, it uh, sometimes it happens that it's not really your story um, and maybe you're not the person who's supposed to tell it or maybe you just you know there are many questions which I'm asking myself now uh, because uh, I was not asking myself this before Mm, and that's why now I think it's very um, different for me when I uh, start a project because I, I think differently than I thought before. Uh, and in general, I think uh, there's so many amazing and great photography out there and so many amazing pictures as single photos, but there are still very few stories that have this really strong uh, emotional impact on you that you remember uh, all the time. So I think, um, I also think it's very um, interesting period in photography now, uh, especially people who are starting out now, uh, uh, the, the generation um, photographers, uh, because uh, you, there's so many things, um, so many elements you can use in photography and trying to kind of tell a story in a more intellectual way rather than just the, you know, the classical way of uh, storytelling. There's so many uh, creating creative um, elements you can use to, to uh, right. you know, tell a story. So I think it's very, very interesting time in photography now. So I suppose, I suppose that advice, um, long story short, is to keep an open mind, not don't pigeonhole yourself into a particular style and be uh, be open to learn and, and absorb other um, other elements from other art forms, from other other styles, other styles, and rather than fixating yourself uh, um, into into a box, like yeah, you said. Exactly. If you're uh, open-minded, I mean, you have to uh, kind of in this era, I think you have to be very open-minded. And then if you are, then I think there's a big thing coming for you as as a photographer. You know, you. you to not lock yourself up in this, you know, classical ways of storytelling. I think it's um, it's really interesting, more interesting to uh, find other ways mm -hmm. of story. Right, and one more thing that um, I remember when I was speaking to Mary, our Croatian winner, she mentioned something about because Instagram is so popular these days, and you go, you scroll Instagram, and you see other people's work. It's it's hard not to compare yourself to other great photographers out there and think that oh maybe my work is not so great you get discouraged so do, do you are you uh, on Insta instagram very often and do you sometimes for someone so accomplished so established like you does it sometimes get to you like that comparison uh, with other people's work and then feeling that oh you know i'm not so good it does it happen and is there a way to balance that you know for, between inspiration and also envy the thing is that um, when you know what you're doing and when you know why you're doing it, um, the things that you said don't really appear in your mind. Um, it's something that, ha I think that happens when you're confused in your photography, confused in your life, and maybe um, that's why this envy comes. I, I don't know, because there's, um, Right now at this stage, I, I use Instagram. I think Instagram is a really fascinating and great uh, medium, uh, social media, where you can 
it's like your own publishing place um, where you can spread uh, the word. <laughs> you know, you can make a story and you can make the audience see and you can make, uh, if you build a big audience, then you can really, um, you know, um, show uh, the story to a lot of people. And that's how, well, if that's your mission, you know, you really definitely you know, have to kind of understand your mission of why you're using Instagram and why you're, you know, I don't think right now I have this uh, pause uh, with Instagram. I, I use it to post and uh, show stories, but I don't scroll. Uh, I'm kind of, uh, sometimes I have this time where I just want to rest from all the images because there's so many images and I see, I look, I look, I look, and it's just too much. And mm. full time where I just don't look at things anymore and then, then I look at it again. Because it's really inspiring. Um, I think it's more inspiring than being envy, envy and comparing yourself when you see other, um, this uh, really fascinating and inspiring photographers doing this amazing job. And then you think that, oh, wow, you know, um, she found or he found this um, story in their country, which is so uh, important and so um rare to see and then you're trying to think oh well maybe you know i mean i think it's more um something that should uh question yourself and kind of make you better than just uh, make you envy because um I think right maybe when you're starting out in photography you could get that um confusion and that feeling of um you know the things that you mentioned but I think after time when you're um, a photographer for some time and you really understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, then I think you do not have that kind of issues uh, coming at you. So, yeah. Right. So always reflect on why you are doing photography and have a very, very, um, stay very grounded in, in the values. And uh, instead of envy, see them uh, as inspiration and don't scroll too much and take breaks. That's your advice. Yeah, I think so. I mean, maybe some people, but that's like my... Uh, <laughs> uh, sure, sure, of course. <laughs> there is some rest because I get very, um, you know... Yeah, you get fatigued and especially everybody is stuck at home um, during the pandemic. You you stick on your phone for too, too long. And try and when I look at my work as well, uh, too much, uh, I kind of get this feeling that... Um, like not to look at my work too much, not to look at my images too much. Uh, I never hang my images on the wall um, because I feel like I will repeat myself after. I don't know why, but I have this feeling that maybe I will do the same in, in the other story. Like uh, when you kind of uh, imprint in your mind the picture. Right, right. Yeah, something like this. Um, so you want to flush it out and make sure you have new inspiration every time you start shooting. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think um, one final question would be, now those of you who are not familiar with our project, um, so Daryl was already our winner in the first edition when we first started this project in 2013 in the, I have it here, hang on. Look, the yellow book, I was so excited, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> the big yellow book. <laughs> you have a copy, right? Yeah, I have a copy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe so... Of all the published work I have, and it's, it's there. That's great, that's great. We, we are also planning uh, um, um, for a book for this edition, so depending on how much money we raise during the pre-order. So uh, we'll keep everyone posted. But I think my question is that, what drew you into the project um, um, since 2013 when we started? And fast forward until 2020, we are really happy that, that you contributed again, um, representing Georgia as well. So what is it that the project has resonated with you that you decided to, to, to join again? I really loved, uh, first of all, I really loved the dedication and the work and the effort you put in. Um, and I think it really kind of, uh, you know, in, I, I love when I see that. And also because I, I saw everyday life from different um, places, different regions. And I also love that um, because um, this, uh, that's what I, I photograph. And uh, when I entered my first, I remember when I, I was so excited that I got in. And then when my, the first, um, when the first edition, the book arrived, I was very, because um, looking for pages, 
Uh, enjoyed it. <laughs> so um, it was it was really exciting, especially in 2013. I don't know how um, in what stage in photography I was, but um, it was definitely something that uh, was really exciting. And I I was uh, urging uh, photographers um, in Georgia to enter for this next editions, uh, and it was. Um, I, I really loved this uh, kind of uh, looking at life in different regions uh, through photography and that's what kind of um, made a huge impression on me when I first saw the project that you can scroll and you can um, flip the pages and you can go to uh, different parts of the world in just one book. So I love that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for your support all these years. And um, I, like I told a lot of my, my colleagues is that although we are stuck in office, but I'm the only one that's traveling around the world. I'm talking to people from, from all over the world. It's like I'm traveling. <laughs> so thank you again for your support. And I think, um, is there anything else you would like to say to maybe the project or um, to, to the audiences? Any last words before we, we, we say goodbye? Um, the thing is that uh, just do the work, continue doing this uh, project because I think it's an amazing, really amazing project and I urge uh, to photographers to enter for the next uh, edition that you will be making. And I love that this year it was uh, regarding uh, COVID-19, um, uh, you know, how people are coping with and the heroes of uh, the this time. And, it really um, shone a light on people that maybe will not have been visible to the public if not for this project. So I think that it was very important to do this uh, during uh, this time and on this topic. Um, so I'm really um, looking forward to what it will be next year. And Definitely. Yeah, keep doing it. And um, yeah. I'm we will, we will. <laughs> I think this, this edition has been the toughest because um, because of the situation uh, everywhere in the world. People are stuck at home. They can't photograph. And it's so specific. It's not something you can look into your archive three, four years ago and pick a story. You have to go out and shoot fresh, fresh stories. Um, and fundraising was very hard as well. So we, we are really glad to have alumni like you to support us um, whenever we have an open call. So I think the next edition we are looking at, um, if not mistaken, is the other hundred chef. Oh, wow. <laughs> we might be looking at food. So for the next edition, you might want to start looking. <laughs> I'm actually one um, master chef in, in Georgia. Um, mm. it, was pretty, uh, it was pretty amazing and exciting. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, that's good. That's good. Great, great uh, topic. Really great topic. It's definitely. Yeah, I think more people will be interested since it's food. It'll be fun to see what everybody else is eating. Yeah, definitely. Something. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think uh, that's all the time we have. I won't keep you for too long. So, for those who just uh, who tune in just now, my name is Jacqueline. I'm the project manager of the Other Hundred, and I'm speaking to Daro, which is our Georgian winner. Uh, for the second time in the other hundred project. So I will catch you later. So Daryl, take care of yourself and let's keep in touch. Thank you so much. Bye bye. <laughs>